There was in a small village, next to a beautiful forest, a girl who lived with her mother in a small house right at the entrance of it. All the inhabitants of the village who needed to go to look for mushrooms, or to fish in the river that crossed it, or the hunter who cleaned the forest of vermin passed by the house and there they stopped to chat, drink some fresh water from the well, they rested if it was hot or they got warm on cold winter days. They all called the little girl, Little Red Riding Hood, because she was always dressed in a deep red cape and a hood that protected her from the sun and the wind. The cape had been made by her grandmother who lived in a clearing in the forest and that cape fit so well on Little Red Riding Hood that she did not want to take it off even to go to sleep. Her mother had to be serious with her so that she would remove her red cloak for bedtime or to wash it from time to time. On those occasions, Little Red Riding Hood was heartbroken. The red cape that her grandmother had given her was so pretty, she suited her so well, and also, we must admit that red is the most beautiful color of all. Little Red Riding Hood and her mother went every day to see Granny at the house in the forest clearing. It was not very far from her house, although they took longer because there were two ways to get to Granny's house, a long one that more or less surrounded the forest and went along the river bank where the fishermen were those who were looking for strawberries and those who were looking for mushrooms, which although it was long it was very safe since they met people and that, when you walk a long road slowly gives you security. There was another much shorter path that went through the forest, but that was much less traveled, only the hunter would pass that path from time to time. One day Little Red Riding Hood's mother prepared a basket with fruit, cheese and a little soup to take to Grandma. The hunter who every day on his way looking for vermin visited Grandma to see how she was, told her that she was in bed ill. Little Red Riding Hood's mother was not very healthy that day either. She had some fever so she gave the girl the basket and said, Little Red Riding Hood, take this basket to Granny and make her eat the hot soup to see if she recovers, make her some company and go back to the house. Don't start chatting with people and don't stop if you see a stranger. He waits at Grandma's house for the hunter to go and returns with him. Little Red Riding Hood took the basket and began to walk along the path that led to the river singing, Bring her to Grandma's house through the forest I'm going. Deep in the forest was the wolf who was hungry for a several days and was so hungry that he dreamed that he was eating a deer, and then a sheep and then a rabbit for dessert. Oh! How hungry I am, said the wolf, I would eat a deer, no, one no two, not two, no, three and talking to himself he began to walk through the forest to see what he could find to carry on his belly, walking, walking he approached the limits of the road and heard little red riding hood singing, trillerallerallar into granny's house through the woods I'm going, the wolf thought, why try to chase an animal if I can snack on that girl who comes so happy on the way, when Little Red Riding Hood got close to where he was hiding he came out of his hiding a place pretending to be sneaky, as if he were walking. Aunt, hello little girl, where are you going so happy? Little Red Riding Hood was reminded of her mother's advice don't stop if you see a stranger but, she was not going to stop, she would keep walking and what was wrong with her if she only spoke to him? I go to my grandmother's house, who is sick, and I bring her some food so she can get good. The wolf who was very cunning pretended to be moved by what Little Red Riding Hood was telling him. Oh, sick. Well, well, if it is that, thank goodness that you are a good girl and you take something to eat even if Granny lives far away. No, said Little Red Riding Hood, she does not live far away, she lives in the little house in the forest clearing, but I am going this way, which is longer but it is safe. The wolf immediately thought that instead of eating the girl, it would be better to eat the grandmother who, being sick, could not defend herself and if the girl was going the long way, he could go the short way and arrive, before the girl at the house of the grandmother. Well, well, I won't stop you, little one, go to grandma's house and you could pick some flowers to cheer her up a bit, don't you think? And so, thought the wolf, I will arrive still with more time than you. Hum, little red riding hood thought. It's true, I'll pick some flowers for Granny. The wolf ran like lightning through the forest until he reached Grandma's house and knocked on the door. Who is it? Granny asked. It's me said the wolf hiding his voice, Little Red Riding Hood. Come in, come in midget at the door is open. 
The wolf came in and when he saw the grandmother he did not leave her or that he was surprised. Throwing himself on top of her, he gobbled her down in a single bite, so without chewing or anything, whole. Um, hum, um, it tastes a bit like cough syrup, how delicious, said the wolf, but I'm still hungry, Granny was very skinny, I'll wait for the girl to come. And taking a nightgown from the closet he got into bed to wait for Little Red Riding Hood to come. Soon she heard the little girl's sing in voice. tra la 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 to Granny's house through the forest I'm going. Little Red Riding Hood knocked on the door. Who is she? asked the wolf in a thin voice. It's me, Granny, Little Red Riding Hood. Come in, come in, the door is open. Little Red Riding Hood left the basket on the table and ran to give her grandmother a kiss as she always did when she went to visit her. Being close, she saw how ugly and haggard her grandmother was today. Granny, you have a bad face today. Oh, this disease that has left me with many dark circles and emaciated, but, come, come, bring you closer to me. I have brought you soup and cheese to help you recover. As she approached the bed, Little Red Riding Hood was surprised, not only did Granny have a pout, but she was horrible. Granny what big eyes that you have. They are to see you better. Granny, what big ears you have. They are, they are, they are to hear you better. Granny but what big hands you have. I, a, they are, to caress you better my girl. But Granny, what big teeth you have. Well and had the wolf tired of hiding that it was the grandmother these are to eat you better she yelled. And jumping out of bed he would gobble up Little Red Riding Hood just as he had done with Granny. Little Red Riding Hood squealed in fear, you are the wolf, what have you done with my grandmother, you have deceived me. By chance the hunter was just passing in front of the grandmother's house at that moment and, hearing the frightened screams of Little Red Riding Hood, he ran into a ready shotgun. As soon as he saw the wolf cornering Little Red Riding Hood to gobble her up she gave him a good volley of salt pellets up her ass. A u u u u u u screeched the wolf. The salt pellets sting very badly, then the wolf jumped up, slammed his head against a beam and fell unconscious to the ground. Little Red Riding Hood was shaking with fright. Where is Granny? asked the hunter. No, no, I don't know, answered Little Red Riding Hood. They heard a distant voice saying, Here, in the belly of the wolf that swallowed me whole. The hunter took a knife and opened the wolf's belly and they took out the grandmother. Between the three of them they put stones in the wolf's belly and took him to the river. When the wolf woke up he had a severe headache, a burning pain in his ass and a full belly. Hum, what happened? He said to himself, My grandmother has made me feel bad. I have a very heavy stomach. I will not eat human meat again, it does not suit me at all. And taking the course of the river he was lost forever.